We are in the backyard of Mike Gonzo, who is a Dakota County Master Gardener, has been for years, and it is an amazing sight. Mike, what would you tell somebody that is pondering building a pond garden? <laughs> uh, don't make it too small, and don't forget about the fish. Ah, all right, well, I'll tell you what, I really wanna go take a tour of this. Let's take a look. All right. Well, I built the pond in 1999, um, but to be honest, the plan started much earlier than that. When we were um, thinking about building a deck, two, three years after we built the house, and we said, you know, it'd be great if we could position a pond or something. And so in the original plans, this pond is there, but I didn't get to that for years. <laughs> but I, as I said, in 99, I finally got up the gumption, in part because a friend of mine uh, put a pond in, in in April and May, and I helped him build it, and I said, this is easy, I can do this. So then on Memorial Day weekend, I started this effort, and by the 4th of July, we officially flipped the switch and turned the pond on. The, the contractor absolutely tried to talk us out of this property, said, oh, it's a nightmare. And in hindsight, it's turned out to be one of the best landscape projects I could have envisioned. We took, we took what, was, what was a problem, which is this big steep hill at the back of our lot here, mm -hmm. and by landscaping it, it almost creates like an auditorium or a theater effect with the planting. So, you know, this really lets you show off your landscape more than a flat lot does. And in the case of a waterfall, how natural is that? Mm -hmm. it's the, the illusion is there. It's coming out of the woods and, and of course it just recycles back up and comes back out. So most of what I've planted here is, uh, has to be shade tolerant because as you can see, this woods creates a, a lot of problems for gardeners. Mm -hmm. And so almost every planting here has the ability to live in light shade to, to shade. I wouldn't necessarily say dense shade. All of these daylilies are technically in full shade and they thrive and they bloom profusely. Uh, I also love to do drift planting. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. I want it to look like nature did this, not me. So whenever I can, I plant as many as of one species as possible so it creates what's called a drift effect. Okay. And drifting is, is what nature would do with self-seeding. So, you know, 10 plants would be in a clump because they're seeding it themselves. So as you can see, we've got uh, all these daylilies and they've jumped across the pond, so they're kind of flanking the pond. Uh, ligularia in bunches, hostas are bunching up. Uh, I use lots of vines, in this case it's an English ivy that actually is trained to cover up the rock and then run along the edge of the pond. Underneath the deck, that's an Engelman ivy. And I love it because it softens what otherwise is a hard, hard scape. I think it's really great when your pond doesn't look like a rock pile. Yeah. Planting densely is a good thing. Okay. I don't have to mulch hardly at all anymore because the plants basically take care of that. So this is a very environmentally sound garden. I don't get weeds because there's no place for them to grow. I also like texture. You want to take into consideration color variants. You want darks. Then you've got your limeys, like this is the gold standard hosta. And then you get some really dark colors, which help kind of pull the woods into the scene here. So you want large leaves, small leaves, and everything in between. <laughs> you certainly have that, Mike, and a whole lot more. Thank you so much for the tour of your fantabulous pond garden. I really appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. From moving water to wine, next up on Dig In Minnesota, we'll take you to one of the loveliest wineries in the state, Cannon River Winery. Up next on Dig In. Coming up today in Dig In, we're going to make mussels with a tomato, basil, and bacon broth.